So I'm in a tabletop orientated game design program at my little podunk university. It's slightly larger than the high school I came from. It's like if you transplanted that exact population into an actual campus with actual buildings and a dorm. It's not a bad place. The people are nice and the education is enlightening. It's just sort of out there. Anyway, so this guy in my workshop class wants me to help him test his tabletop RPG. I was sort of a recluse at the time and had only just started going to the gaming club and playing RPGs. Luckily the group I had been playing with said they had tested it once before and that I should get in on the playtest. The series of games that occurred afterwards have changed me TG. I am here to regale you with the tales of a most foul and utterly hilarious and nep sessions I have ever played in. I'm here to tell you about Legacy War. We'll begin with a short introduction of our key players. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Timo, the creator of the game and our GM for the playtesting sessions. He's super spurgy and loves League of Legends. Entirely socially inept. I originally gave him the benefit of the doubt and assumed he was avoided due to his spurginess and not his personality. I was mistaken. He wears a Timo hat. Royoma, normal GM of our group. Loves Getter Robo. Got me into 80s anime and other stuff. Has been writing novels and short stories for years and has been role playing for nearly as long. Really good GM. Cool guy all round. Dirk. Cool guy who doesn't play with us much anymore because of work. He's kind of goofy and makes lots of puns and purposefully lame jokes for us to groan and laugh at. Loves the ever loving shit out of mech assault and battle tech. Me. Socially recluse until two or so weeks ago before this takes place. I had only a few sessions under my belt as a player. Generally have no idea how the specific mechanics of each RPG works, but I know enough about the general aspects. Others will be introduced as they are needed. Several will come and go, but we're the mainstay of this journey into absurdity. This session I had agreed to play in was the second playtest of Legacy War. Royoma and Dirk, however, have informed me of all the glorious shit that happened in the first session. Royoma and Dirk sit down and get their character sheets. They're cheap word doc type fill in the blank messes, but given that we're a bunch of college kids, this is sort of expected. There are kunai up in the corner of the sheets. Oh fuck. There are three stats that matter in Legacy Wars. I forgot their actual names, but they amount to strength, armor and mobility. There is an independent charka stat, which acts as a pool of points that you spend to cast Jutsu. Fucking weebs. It's a Naruto RPG. Oh, God. oh no! <laughs> no! Fuck. <laughs> you can pick from several elements, each of which has three Jutsus to use. The only ones that matter are Fire, Earth and... Fuck me. Tajutsu. Roima. So what element is Tajutsu? Timo. It's Tajutsu. Roima. Yeah, but what is it? Timo. It's Tajutsu. This is how Timo attempts to answer most questions and resolve most conflict. Roima and Dirk settle on Earth as one of its jutsus gives players the ability to create a wall, spending one charka per use without specifying the size of the wall in any way, shape or form. Timo tells him that their inventory for purposes of this session will be a cloth and a dagger. Timo. It's a special dagger. Dirk. What's so special about the dagger? Timo. You can throw it? Roima, wait. Can I not just pick up a kitchen knife and throw it? Timo. You can also stab with it? Roima. Then can I not just stab with a kitchen knife? Timo has a tendency to not understand our questions. As to him, the answers he has prepared should be obvious to even the most common observer, regardless of how absurd the answer is and the logic that allowed him to arrive to it. This is point. Roima and Dirk are equal parts enthralled and frustrated. Timo. Oh, and it explodes. Timo just sort of casually drops this on him, and Dirk and Roima lose their shit and start laughing. Timo begins the session and informs the pair that they have children who reside in the village hidden in the flowers, and their village leader is the cage. Roima and Dirk are bewildered at how blatant of a copy of Naruto this is, and confront Timo about this at every session, but he vehemently denies it. Roima suddenly realises something horrible and promptly asks Timo, Hey, what are our clothes like? Timo, 
How do you mean? Roima, what clothes are we wearing? I see we have some cloth, Timo. A cloth, Dirk. So we're wearing loincloths? Dirk and Roima then accept this at face value. Dirk and Roima go wandering through the streets of a seemingly empty village to see the totally not Hokage. Timo, don't forget to roll, Roima. Roll for what? Timo, your movement. Timo at this point presented them with a piece of graph paper that represented the village. Timo, what's your mobility? Roima, three. Timo, roll 2d6 and add three and that's how far you can move. Timo has them roll for movement outside of combat. It takes them multiple turns worth of rolling to walk to the totally not Hokage's keep thing whatever. I'm doing my best with these weeb words, so stick with me. Kage, the people of the village have fallen horribly ill and we need you to collect seven of these flowers so that we can make an antidote. Dirk and Roima spend several turns walking out of the village and into the forest with a path, which is two spaces wide and something like 30 long. Dirk, so is there anything here? Timo, the bushes around you begin rattling. Roima, rustling? Timo, rattling. (laughs) Dirk, which bush? Timo, all of the bushes. Dirk, uh, all of the bushes? Dirk and Roima continue to laugh their ass off at rows of bushes rattling when suddenly a few squirrels and a wolf jump out of the bush immediately next to them. They ask Timo how this works and they don't get a straight answer. Dirk, I throw my knife at a squirrel. Timo, it explodes. The squirrel dies. You see the other squirrels are acting weird. Roima, weird like how? Timo, weird, you you know how squirrels act. Roima, yes, Timo, I'm wholly aware of how squirrels act. How are these actions weird? Timo, you notice them looking up. Dirk, fuck it, I'll bite. I look up. Timo, you see a meteor. Fresh off the rattling bushes, Roima and Dirk start howling. Dirk, one of the mentors, Minimally paid, involved TA, just loses his shit completely after trying to act semi-professional. Dirk, we're all dead! Timo, it's like a fist. Dirk, oh shit, well, we might make it then. Timo, it's in the shape of a fist but the size of a ship. Dirk, then we're all dead! The pair is reeling and eventually, accepting that the meteor isn't going to kill them, and lands mere feet from them. The other squirrels and the wolves have disappeared, never to be mentioned again. Dirk, I searched the crater. Timo, okay, roll 1d12. Dirk, why? Searching and other skill checks are unmentioned in the rules, as there are no skills or anything of the sort save for three stats. There is no mention of dice being rolled or at any sort of resolution of action. Timo, because it's moving. Dirk, The crater is moving! Dirk rolls 1d12 and gets an 8 or something. Timo mulls it over and decides that 8 is high enough. Dirk enters the crater while Roima watches over him. Inside the crater is a single stone. Dirk touches it and it crumbles, revealing within yet another, smaller stone that is smooth to the touch. Timo, the stone is special. Roima, special high. Timo, It's magic. Roima. Yes, but what does it do? Timo. Magic. (laughs) 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 Fucking spark. I know. Now, I'd like to remind you guys that Timo is playing this shit completely straight. If it were a tongue-in-cheek thing, we'd be laughing at the jokes. But this is Timo GMing a completely legitimate session of his game, which he's taking super seriously. Suddenly... From the bushes comes a shadowy figure. He has a sword in each hand and another sword on his back. Why does this boy need three swords? Edge factor. (laughs) His face is covered in shadow. Roima moves to engage. Roima throws his exploding knife, which the dual-wielding swordsman then caught, despite not having any free hands to do so. Okay. But it's an exploding kunai, right? Timu allows it to explode. But oh no, this one is totally a smoke bomb, can I? He and Dirk chew Timo out over how dumb that is. At which point, Timo allows him to try again. Roima lobs his knife at him. And after consulting Timo and the rules for his movement, the two come to the conclusion 
that he then outruns his knife and gets the shadowy figure in a Phil Nelson. <laughs> the knife hits Roima. The figure is gone. What? Dirk swings his fist and tries to land a solid blow on the figure. Timo, what's your strength? Dirk, why do you need my strength? Timo, to see how much damage you do. Dirk, but I didn't roll to hit him. Timo, what? Roima, wait, we don't roll to hit? Timo, what's that? Dirk and Roima have their minds blown as they realise that Timo isn't just bad, but has absolutely no idea what the fuck he's doing. Timo, nothing happens. Dirk, what? Timo, his armor's too high, you hit him and nothing happens. Strength to damage is one to one. Armor cancels out damage, meaning that if the opponent has more armor than you have strength, that the opponent is functionally invincible. No dice rolling involved. Roima starts mulling over the rules again looking over what their options are to fight this guy. Neither of them are strong enough to do damage to him, but they don't have any offensive jutsu. Just Earthwall. They only needed Earthwall. Earthwall didn't have a size limitation, meaning it could be any length and width, or height. Roima. I use my chakra to create an Earthwall. Tima. Okay, where? Roima. I create a wall tall enough to eject him into the atmosphere. Timo loses his shit. Timo, no, you can't do that. Roima, why can't I? There's nothing in the rules about how big that wall has to be. Timo, it's not allowed. Timo crosses his arms to form an X. Roima, why not? Timo, because you can't do that. Roima, clearly I can because I'm totally doing it. This is the point where the first session breaks down. <laughs> Roima and Dirk assert they kill their assassin by sending him into space and gather the flowers. Upon the Kage refusing to award them, they hold the village hostage by threatening to jetson them into space using Earthwall. <laughs> when I came to play in the second session, there were some things that I learned had changed. Earthwall was removed, <laughs> as Timo didn't know how to fix it. Dirk and Roima had told him to just add specifications to the size of the wall. He just ignored them. Ranges for the various jutsus and weapons were added. They're in terms of grid squares. Daggers have a range of 3 squares and swords have a range of 5. Each square is 5 times 5 feet. Mm-hmm. That's really big. That's really big. That's so five. I'm 5'4, five so, so if I'm like a, that's. that's the, the, I mean, so a sword's got the range of 25 foot? Or am I disabled? Well, I'm not going to take you on that, James. Right, well. <laughs> the daggers are 15 feet long and the swords are 25 feet long. Classes are added one for melee. One that's essentially a wizard, and the other is a tank. The tank class is clearly superior, as it gets more advantages and fewer disadvantages stats in a game with only three stats. I created DMX Con, a tank who specialises in fire jutsu. As Fireball does, 1d20 burn damage, regardless of how many damage the jutsu itself actually does. Roima does the math and determines that if a character puts absolutely every single point they will ever get into armour, and armour alone, they still would not survive a single natural 20 fireball jutsu. Roima builds Senpai Sama Sun Kun, a Sasuk XB with functionally <laughs> infinite defence. I hate Japanese! <laughs> <laughs> he and Timo argue about why he can't have two shields to further increase his defence. We assume that welding two shields is an ancient and forbidden technique. Dirk creates Ricky Babakun, a fighter who specialises in Tajutsu. Tajutsu Jutsu cast from HP and not Chakra. Bloody Knee deals a shitload of damage and somehow causes bleed damage, but also takes 15 HP to use. Ricky Babakun only has 14 HP. <laughs> Timo, you're all sparring off in the arena. Roima, sparring off. Timo, sparring off. Me. That sounds pretty suspect. We take a moment to deliberate who the party is. Ricky Babakun is our Naruto. Senpai Samasan Kun is our Sasuke. I don't know Naruto. I don't know Naruto either. Look, if you don't Sasuke. know Naruto and you're going to garner in the comments, I don't, don't. care. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't I honestly care couldn't care less. Point. <laughs> and DMX Kun is our Sakura. I'm a gay ninja wizard. <laughs> <laughs> we report to the Kage who warns us about stampede of squirrels and wolves that are going to destroy the village 
What? They're apparently being led by some sort of creature. Timo slash Kage. It's a zombie. Or a golem. Or some other sort of sinister creature. Roima drags us along to the store. Roima. Do you have any shields here? Timo slash shopkeeper. That's not allowed. Timo crosses his arms in the shape of an X. I didn't know anything about the last session, so I have no idea what the fuck is happening. Roima. Is that you or the shopkeeper? Timo, what? Roima. Are you in character telling me that I can't ask for two shields? Or are you, as the GM, telling me I can't have two shields? Timo. I don't know what you mean. This continues until Timo says that the shop does not have shields, but they cost 100 gold. <laughs> we only have 100 copper apiece. <laughs> Swords and daggers, on the other hand, are 25 copper. Roima leaves the store, eagerly searching for something to use as a shield. Roima. Are there any in trash cans nearby? Timo. Sure. Roima. I take the lid. Timo once again crosses his arms in an X and says that isn't allowed. Roima. What? Is it changed to the actual can or something? Timo. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Roima. I break the chain. Timo. That's not allowed. This continues until we pick up the trash can and proceed out of the village. <laughs> we arrive at the two square width path. Timo circles a 2x2 two two grid area and says that that's where the stampede of wolves is. He says there's hundreds of animals in the stampede in a 10x10 10 10 foot area. We assume they're all standing on each other, forming a wolf tower. I light the trash can on fire and throw it at them. <laughs> it explodes, killing all of them. Oh well, what? Suddenly, a golem comes sprinting out of the woodwork. Roima simply walks up to it physically incapable of being hurt by it. Roima. So, can enemies pass through opposed squares? Timo. What? We explain what that means, at which point Timo says they can't. The golem occupies two by two on the grid, and since the path is only two squares wide, the golem is stalled and cannot progress because reasons. <laughs> Village saved. Roima begins to climb the golem, which inexplicably incapacitates it. We discover over the next few turns that the golem is made of flesh, has eyes, a mouth, and can breathe. Dirk. Then isn't this a giant and not a golem? Timo. It's a golem. Me. A flesh golem? Roima shoves his shield into its mouth and jumps up and down on it, trying to suffocate it. Dirk. No, there's no choice. We have to use that. Dirk's character sprints forward, leaping into the air and extending its knee forward. Dirk. Cold shot to the nards, all or nothing. Me. Ricky Baba Senpai, no! Dirk. Bloody knee! Dirk rolls 18. We have no idea what bloody knee is, or how it actually functions despite constantly questioning Timo about it. We assume that their user snaps his knee in such a way that a single bone is left jutting out from their knee, stabbing the target and causing monumental damage. Dirk's character flies gracefully with the air his leg bending and breaking with a sickening snap just moments before he collides with the delicate skin of the giant's coin purse. The giant moans as he falls to his knees. The giant falls, his face on its side, and faintly whispers, Thank you. We all erupt into laughter. We can't fucking breathe. I start to cry. Dirk, holy fuck, did we just get him off? We all couldn't... <laughs> We all come to the conclusion that the giant came to death. We insist to Timo that he's meant to groan. He isn't sure what we mean and continues to assure us that he meant moan. We start to lament the loss of our brother and comrade, nameless giant, just as the Kage approaches us from the village gates. Timo slash Kage. So I see that you've managed to survive my experiment. The whole table's jaw drop as we stare at Timo. Me slash DMX. What the fuck are you talking about? Timo slash Kage. I was using a secret mind control device in that golem. Roima. Giant. Timo Kage. Golem. It seems that it worked out okay. Roima and I glance at each other and both catch that we have these what the fuck is happening faces going on. Me slash DMX. Then this was all your fault. Me. I cast fireball. Timo. You can't do that. The three of us together come back with a simultaneous Why not? Timo, he's the Kage, it's not allowed. Roima, 
So what if he's the Kage? We can kill him, Teemo. But you'll be hunted down by the other ninjas. Roima, what are they going to do? Kill me? I roll my d20 and the gods smile upon the die. The emperor himself blowing upon it as it spun about the tabletop. 20. This is where the second session falls apart. We continue to assert that Kage burns to death and we destroy the single item shop in the village, burning it down for overpricing its shields. In its place, we erect a love hotel where giants can get off without going on murderous rampages. (laughs) We memorialise a sofa in the lobby. It's taxidermied from the scroat of the of the giant slash golem and above it hangs a plaque in his honour. Ricky Bubba's body is still out in the trail. A warning to all practitioners of Tajitsu. From here on out, the stories get less numerous and exciting, though events of note still occur. We aren't sure if he's actually retarded. We actually try to account for this when we play with him because throughout all of his wacky shit, we are still playtesting a game that Timo is creating. We've offered to help him and have given him numerous specific suggestions, down to actually writing out some of the rules, or citing other books and showing them to him. We aren't outright dicks to him or anything. He then ignores us, or further breaks the game every session. For instance, our next session is a repeat of the first one, which I wasn't present for. Professor of the workshop class joins us after we tell her about the first two sessions. We build the same characters, Legacy War now has an introductory paragraph. It was the 1987 when the mysterious guy appeared and warned of the war to end all worlds, was the first sentence. The mysterious guy kidnaps a random kid and disappears. All instances of the word toughness have been replaced with tightness. The description for tightness is what your character can take. LOL. (laughs) How tight are you? (laughs) We go out and look for flowers for the Kage's date. Suddenly, wolves. Roima picks up a wolf to use as a weapon. Timo has no idea what he means, assumes he's throwing the wolf. We have to explain in intricate detail that he's swinging the wolf like a club. It does damage equal to its strength. Roima searches a live wolf and finds fur and teeth. The wolf died upon being searched, exploding into teeth and fur. We gathered the flowers for the first time and complete the quest. All instances of the word toughness have been replaced with tightness. The description for tightness is what your character can take. That cannot simply have been unintentional. The raw stupidity otherwise just boggles the mind. It is neither, my friend. Of that, I can assure you. Talk to Timo on the quad in front of the library about how his game is turning out. Timo. Well, I'm working on crafting and pets right now. I think I'll be done with it soon. Me. You should probably work on the actual game first. That's what I'm doing. And it's what Roima did. I revamped my entire core mechanic and he made sure his was solid before he moved to other parts. He starts to try and give me advice and talks to me about his process. That being, make it all up as you go along. Final session of Legacy War rolls round. Professor returns to playtest. Along with another professor, he teaches several math and game design classes. He also GMs some of our games. He glances over the rules for a moment. Timo gets up from his seat to go to the kitchen. Math professor gets up and leaves silently, returning to his office, never to return. (laughs) I should note that all these games take place on campus. We start yet another session looking for flowers for Kage. Other professor immediately rage quits upon realising that Timo didn't change the game at all since the last playtest, despite our advice. We fight the mysterious guy who is actually the shadowed figure from the first session. Burn him to death in two turns. Look at his character sheet. He's named after Timo, but titled Timo the Killer. What? Look back over the rules, specifically at the intro. The village hidden in the flowers is located, and I fucking quote about 20 minutes outside of actual hometown. We were playing the antagonists of his Naruto self-insert fic all along. The year is 2030. The face of tabletop gaming has changed. No more Warhammer, no more Fate, no more GURPS or Fudge, no easy to pick up D6 systems. Wizards of the Coast has been bought out by Legacy War Inc. 
a mysterious guy called Timo emerges from the East and released Legacy Wars, the single most over the top retarded tabletop system ever created. Everyone played it for giggles at first, but eventually it found its way into its intended audience. Weeaboo, ass pies, and autists emerge from the woodwork like cockroaches. They outbreed casual tabletop players, and their sheer ignorance and stupidity makes them impossible to convince of their own faults. They gain momentum. Eventually, all tabletop gaming is just Legacy Wars. They release three new editions, all based on Bleach, One Piece, and Dragon Ball Z. Develop time traveling message technology. Make this post. Kill Timo. Kill him now. Before it's too late. You are the future's only hope. <laughs> <laughs>